Um, Bongino apparently, Bongino. I'm looking for a TP on my bunghole. Bongino, Bongino, guys. Um, <laughs> Bongino wants to address his uh, dust up with Geraldo the other day, and I. I think we need to hear him out. I'm not doing this whole show. That's an hour episode. But he talks about it in the beginning, I think, and gets it. I mean, because the whole thing is about that blow up with Geraldo last night, the Dan Bongino show. And I'm glad he registered it because you don't want somebody sniping that sweet, sweet Bongino name. <laughs> um, <laughs> we'll get to that today. Don't go anywhere. Today's show brought to you by ExpressVPN. Oh, okay. Sorry. Is he, did he jump back? I called out. Period. Period. Full stop a ruski. Stop a ruski. Adorable. What am I talking about? Had a little blow up with Geraldo last night. You may have seen it. We'll get to that today. Don't go anywhere. Today's show brought to you by Express VP. I'm not doing your ads for you, dude. Current controversy surrounding Tucker Carlson again. Liberal media lunatics and their interest group buddies trying to get Tucker Carlson fired for the. That he's talking about me, and I'm not actually trying to get Tucker Carlson fired. I just am amazed he has a job, considering he's I mean, he's an overt white supremacist. Like I, that doesn't mean everybody at Fox is, but but he is. The uh, 67.55 time or something like that. Great math. 57.55 time. This is tight. This is I. You, if there's anybody, I think, that can pick up the mantle of Rush Limbaugh, it's Bongino. Today's show brought to you by Jenny Cell. Listen, it's the final week for Chamonix's spring clearance event where you can get the brand. Really? We're doing more ads? Jesus. What? Genu Cell? What do you do? Rub it on your gonads? There we go. What? By the way, what a catastrophic disaster before the show this morning. It's amazing I'm in such a good mood. We've had everything from Joe's technical stuff crapping out. Uh, cry me a friggin' river. You got a staff present. Um, to my entire power, uh, my entire power grid in my house going down. It's amazing. Really? I didn't realize you moved the show to Texas. We're going to get this show out close to on <laughs> time today. Really? Yeah. If you only knew what happened before the show today. And you, just, you just told us your power almost went out and then he had technical difficulties, probably related to the power outage. Everybody get that? And I, last night, I had a hard time sleeping because I was so geeked up. After my uh, after my fireworks with Geraldo. So what's really, really, you you lay awake at night, like fist balled up, staring at the ceiling, like fuck out, oh, Geraldo. Really, that kept you awake. <laughs> what's going on? Again, as I said before, I'm tired of it. I'm not doing this anymore. Okay, I'm not. Great. Okay. End of show. Cool. All right. Well. Uh, I guess we say good riddance to the uh, Dan Bongino show. Not going to allow you on television because liberals told you to do it or someone, uh, some. Or you actually feel that way and you are reacting to what's actually being said from your ethical point of view. And whereas you might not hit that note all the time, it does come up for you emotionally. Is that what you were going to say? No? Some interest group or someone is pushing you into it. If yeah, probably the nurses union. If you're going to inject race into a situation without having any of the facts, you're Well... Any of the facts? Getting called out. And you should do it too. To your friends, your neighbors, everyone else. Yes. Anybody who uh, says that I'm racist because of my ice cream choices, I will definitely call them out for, you know, for playing the race card. <laughs> what? If you have evidence someone acted uh, in some capacity um, and they their motives were racist, then call them out. They deserve it. Absolutely. Yes, this is true. Uh, you mean like Tucker Carlson? Perfect. If you don't, then shut up until you know stuff. I'm not quite sure what he's referring to, uh, like in terms of the clip with Geraldo or Tucker Carlson or both or neither. What was I talking about? Well, I went on. Nobody fucking knows. Hannity last night and had oh, yeah. my typical debate with Geraldo. I have a lot on the Hannity. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the guy who has a career and has been around for a long time, who I'm not a particularly big fan of, but um, by the way, are head tattoos a thing? The show on Fox, 9 p.m. Eastern time, in case you missed it. Oh, yeah. No, no, we saw the clip. And, of course, you know, I had said yesterday on Fox and Friends that this shooting of Dante Wright in Minnesota. 
yeah. by this police officer. We've now seen the video. I'm not going to play it. You've probably seen it a thousand times. It appears she was trying to tase Dante Wright, pulled out a firearm, shot Dante Wright, who later drove off while shot, crashed, and then uh, it died later. Yes, we all, we're all familiar with the details. This appears at this point to be a tragic accident. People are held accountable for accidents all the time. Yeah, so that's why second degree manslaughter. But I feel like many of she'd have run over him with a car, she'd get charged with the same thing. View that the officer, like anyone else, being an American citizen, should get due process. Must get due process. Not should, because that's what a constitutional republic does. Yeah. Sorry. Um, I'm sorry, what part of the uh big old lefty commie Marxist that I'm supposedly made up of um is supposedly inherently disagreeing with due process has anybody ever has this asshole even seen my show well before i get to the geraldo thing so geraldo said he doesn't she doesn't deserve due process or is he just talking about you being tone deaf about shit of course they had to racialize this everyone on the left because dante wright is black and the officer is a female uh, white officer so they have no evidence race motivated anything but look uh, New York Post story will be in my newsletter today. Dante Wright shooting. Bro this is what happened in Brooklyn Center. Brooklyn Center city manager fired after call for due process for police officer. Do you understand the left? I'm not kidding. How did the left fire him? How is that a left thing? H honest to God. Didn't I? Did, all people involved in stuff like that should get due process. But here's, here's what I will say. In terms of due process for that officer, that, that goes to whether or not she, you know, they, they investigate on, you know, her past or, or, you know, her relationship with her partner, the circumstance, whether she meant to pull her gun or not. That, I mean, that would all be part of the entire investigation. And that due process would have to do with her being a free person. It doesn't have anything to do with her resigning and no longer being able to be a police officer forever. Any kind of internal review, like anybody who would make that kind of mistake and somebody dies is not and cannot be trusted to be a public servant. The, the due process in that is she was supposed to be doing this kind of job, protecting and serving and keeping the peace, and she mistook her taser for a gun and killed someone. Even on those merits alone, she doesn't deserve to be a police officer anymore. Kidding. I'm not messing with you. I'm not toying with you. It's not hyperbole. Do you understand? He's, he's really loud. Sorry about that, guys. I'm, I have it set on uh, um, Don Jr. Apologies. The left wants a third world republic right now. Why do we want a third world republic? Because we don't want... Wouldn't a third world republic be where the cops can shoot somebody and get away with it? Isn't that what happens in third world countries? Third world countries, if doesn't matter who the fuck you are. If you're downstream from whoever the authorities are, whether it's a soldier walking the street or, or their version of a police officer, if you fuck around, they can kill you and p throw you in a ditch. That would be the third world version of events. The first world version of things is where, indeed, there is due process whether you're going to go to jail or not, and there is no avoiding that, and it'll absolutely happen. But if somebody who's a public servant does something that fucked up and somebody who is their boss goes, hey, I, let's tap the brakes on this or whatever, they're not to be a spokesperson and they're not... Uh, capable of being in a supervisory position if they try to walk off someone going, oops, I thought this was my taser and I shot someone dead. They want a third world oligarchy. Is there another kind? Are there third world democracies? Run by little mini tyrants. That's all. Little, little mini tyrants? All they want. If you even dare to say something like the Brooklyn Center where this happened, Brooklyn Center said, the city manager says, hey, the officer should get due process. Like She will get due process. That, that, and w no one avoids that. Unless, of course, you're, you know, shot. Anyone else being accused of a, she's being accused of a crime by many people on the left. Of a no, she's being accused of manslaughter. Second degree manslaughter, not first degree manslaughter, basically depraved indifference and a, 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 a forward moving accident where a life is taken, not a defensive circumstance where escaping 
some situation you backed over another human being. A situation where uh, possibly afraid for your life, you decide to drive through a crowd of people and you men end up killing someone. That ends up being second or first degree manslaughter, at minimum. Of a, of a homicide, of a murder. Pretty serious charge, you know? No, she's not being charged of a murder. She's being charged with manslaughter. Second degree manslaughter. Keep up, dipshit. City manager says the officer gets due process. The city manager got fired. Got fired for saying that. They want a third world republic, the left. So, so you, it's still a republic, though. So basically, so, so we want third, third world Republicans running things. I, well, we almost, we basically did the last four years. That's what they want. They want that. That, that you ever see the what was it? The Dark Knight, the Batman movie. Where yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah. I love movie analogies because life often does fit into narrowly cast uh, villain and hero uh, analogies, don't you think? With the scarecrow. Remember that guy? You're you're into the comic book movies like me, right? I know, I uh, this. Yeah, totally tells, uh, uh, you know, me and you, we bond on this. Scarecrow, they have the court, the fake court. Everybody, everybody's guilty. Everybody's guilty. And even when you're not guilty, you still have. Yeah, death by Unga Bunga. We get it. Have to go walk out on the ice. That's what they want. Is it? That's weird. Because the problem they seem to have, even at the most extreme, is nobody walks out on the ice. Even when some people deserve it. The, they see, You can't say that they want to disarm all the cops and then say what they really want is everyone to walk the plank. How, the, how does somebody losing their city manager job equate to um, the extrajudicial assassination of every defendant that goes before a court? L listen, to, to, can you imagine how few synapses are actually firing in this skull right now. To, right? <laughs> God forbid the officer subjected to an investigation. She is going through an investigation. And we find out the facts of the case before- They are finding out the ca facts of the case before she's sent to jail. But she can't keep her fucking job. That's what they're talking about. Before we jump to conclusions to start a race war in America, maybe not a good idea, folks. Maybe not a good idea. I, I, I don't know that anybody's trying to jumpstart a race war. I mean, perhaps people are. I beg your pardon. I, I do know that there are, you know, agent provocateurs in media on the right that, have, that pretend to be on the left and the like. There was an entire, uh, like, news website that was sending their blogs around as if, that they, as if they were, you know, credentialed news articles to try and foment discord and all that kind of stuff. But enough about Russian money. So, of course, going into my interview last night with Geraldo, I was really pissed off about this whole thing because we don't know anything yet. So here's... Yeah, we, yeah, we do. We, we know a lot, quite frankly. We know he was pulled over. He had warrants. Uh, he had called his mom right before. His girlfriend was in the car. Um, when they uh, started to arrest him for his warrant, he's, uh, his, the woman took a hold of his hand or tried to. He struggled to break free, dove into the car. She was moving to tase him, at least in her mind. And she was tasing him because he was attempting to flee. And, the, and her partner and she were both in the danger zone of this moving vehicle. And she went to tase him and apparently mixed up her gun. That's part of the investigation, whether she's really saying that or she just yells taser, taser, taser for her thing. And that's the code in that police department so they can just shoot somebody. And that was the conversation they had at the bar. That's the part the investigation would look into. But, but taking her at her word in the circumstance... She mistook her gun for her taser and shot a fleeing suspect who, for all practical purposes, people believe was unarmed. That does not mean there was not a gun in the car, as often happens and can happen. You know, the I think somewhere in the order of 23 cops died at traffic stops last year alone in 2020. Um, just from somebody pulling over license and registration, pow, right out the window. Um, plus the person, once they enter a moving vehicle and they are seeking to flee in that motor vehicle, that motor vehicle is now a deadly weapon. That said, um, a fleeing suspect who's in, you know, a carjacking or something like that, you follow them, you uh, chase them for a while, you put down spike strips, you make sure that they're not hurting anybody else, and you try to take them into custody as best you can. Um, in this particular situation, it looks like a mix-up. 
but we but to say we don't know anything about it i and everybody who's watching the show could prattle off the those basic details just from what was in the news yesterday but please don't let that stop you from getting angry at supposedly what Geraldo wants because you'd rather be an insensitive bastard about all of it and going, the guy had it coming and leave it at that. Here's what happened. Here's how it started off. Here's cut one from my uh, fireworks last night with Geraldo. It doesn't start out that well. But again, Geraldo wants to reinvent everything. He doesn't have any facts about the situation at all. Check this out. Geraldo's perfectly entitled to an opinion. You know, just because you weren't a police officer doesn't mean you can't comment on policing issues. I always... I know. ...tate when liberals say that about us. But, you know, whatever, going to dinner with a police I'm not CEO a captain um, doesn't... Uh, no, I'm not suggesting you are. I'm just saying that... You know, you oh, don't, don't understand Don't, don't start interest. minimizing oh, my experience. Haroldo, can half you a shut up for two seconds? I'm a half a century uh, Listen, uh, Haroldo, well, I'm not, not, interested. not when can you... you just... This is adorable, by the way. And I, I hope all of you are enjoying this Fox on Fox crime as much as I am. To be quiet You're trying to second? undermine the foundation uh, of my... Haroldo, Haroldo, Haroldo. Haroldo. I don't... Uh, Frank and Smithberry, I don't... I have to look that up now. You're uh, making me ask a question. Um... Uh... Um, uh, you're not postpone and argue any more time to build a respective case. The Kenosha Center's gun, and the Center's killing anything here. So, did not plead not guilty to all charges. And so, you which capture the phone. Um, he has been out on bail since November. When is, um, yeah, so uh, Kyle Rittenhouse is indeed out um, on bail. However, um, his bail was $2 million and was paid for by conservative fundraisers. So um, obviously the elimination of cash bail wouldn't have done anything to uh, keep uh, Kyle Rittenhouse from uh, enjoying spring break at home. I'm an expert witness tonight. I did not realize we were talking about empty vaults. Let, let him talk, know. then we'll let you go, let guys go back and forth. I'm, I'm tired of this. Yeah, let, let him talk. You guys, come on. If Can't we all get along? Thanks, Sean. This guy. He, uh, he Dan, never shuts just, up. Dan. He never shuts up. You, well, if he shut up, then go back to talking. Uh, I, oh, I forgot. What you're really on there to talk about is that he... Never shut up. He's always go, got something to say. Go, dude. It's a talk show. <laughs> That's like people on my radio show accusing me of, you know, you just like the sound of your own voice, dude. It's my radio show. It's named after me. I enjoy calls as much as the next person, but they're referential to the to the product I'm putting out. Not, uh, yeah. Go right. back to your statement. Go. He's forgotten it. Now, again, as I was saying, he's entitled to an opinion. He's not entitled to a certain set of facts. You don't know anything about actual policing if you haven't. Yes, yeah, citizens shouldn't have to know anything about actual policing. They should be better informed about the day-to-day -day, um, of what police do. I will say that, that there is a shortage of news stories, except like you only hear about cops when shit hits the fan. You don't, you hear, I mean, I don't know the last time I've seen a news story. Um, I think, what was the shooting where the one-off, oh, the, the, uh, the, the grocery store mass shooter, where they just said one officer died. That was it. Dude ran right towards the trouble, you know, uh, fired on the subject, ended up getting killed, left behind two kids, but... All you really heard was, you know, this guy killed this many. The story is always about the shooter. I haven't done it. Saying or suggesting, you know, you can relate to the experience of police officers. You can't. I'm not suggesting what happened yesterday wasn't a tragedy. It was, obviously. There's a dead young man who's never going to take another breath of oxygen again in his life. We don't have all the facts on this. We know she said taser. It appears, appears to be a mistake and a fatal one. Well, little backstory. I was, I not an.
you're you're gacked up on Adderall and uh, and pre workout excuse or anything, and I'm not excusing it's nothing to be excused for, but. You all work hard. It's not a sob story, please. But I had a really long day yesterday. Aww. Guys. Why didn't you say that at the beginning, Bongino? Then we would have felt bad for you. What? Guys. Guys. Mm. I take back everything I said at the, you know, about Bongino. He had a rough day, guys. It was long. It was a lot to do. He had a whole like show or something, and then he had to be. And then later on, he had to be on Hannity, which of course is soul poisoning. That I understand. Um, but you know, guys, why can't we just? Uh, I mean, I I think he's having a snowflake moment. It's okay. A long day. Not going. I I feel like I need a. Uh, um. Do I have the? Uh, no, I don't. I wish I did. I, I'm gonna have to buy like the like get the uh, um, sad um, like this doesn't do it. I need the uh, the the sad violin music. <laughs> oh, hold on, um, sad violin wave. Do that. Here, this will do it. Hopefully. <laughs> guys. Stand by. You know, had a really rough day, guys. We're sorry, Geraldo. Dan Bongino. Just was not ready to be called a punk. Um... <laughs> going on obviously with the radio show coming up business stuff i'm planning and all this other stuff oh. so by the time i got on the air yeah you you were just like all that could you could focus on was the fact that you'd basically invested in parlor and your dumbass friends who put the thing together um used demo versions of software for security and people were able to s take down like seven trillion seven terabytes of data and post it online including the GPS coordinates of everybody who posted shit, where their pictures were posted, when their videos were posted, and who shot them, all the contents of the phone that shot them, <laughs> the the, uh, the home address, home phone number, the social security number, the driver's license number of your verified people. You know, just little shit. And I can understand how you'd be really upset. My blood glucose, <laughs> use a biological marker for my fatigue, was probably at record lows. I, my BS, my tolerance for BS was about yay big last night. I don't like telling people to shut up on the air, but I'm sorry last night he deserved it. I didn't get but two sentences in to my commentary and he's already interrupting me, Harold. So again, I, I, I'm not a big fan of telling people to shut up on the air, you know. But when it works, But he it works. deserved it yesterday, uh, so sorry, not sorry. It's so but he sad. started off, I didn't want to play the whole thing, but he had mentioned that, you know, hi, you know, I, whatever, I go out to dinner with this guy, I've been around cops or put him, and that's terrific. And I'm not suggesting that people who haven't been police officers can't comment on policing issues. That's absurd. Y y yeah, I know. You know, I'm not a woman, but I comment on things like pro-life issues all the time. <laughs> I'm not a woman, but I basically tell women what to do all the time with their bodies. But I am also acknowledging, I don't know what the, obviously, what the, because there are men and there are women, I can't get pregnant, I am a man, I don't know what- Citation needed. I mean, most of us have only seen you tits up on a Fox show, so, and uh, on the Bongino show. It's like the birth- I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna misgender you, even if you insist. Which child? I was there when my two children were born. My wife looked like she was in a lot of pain, but I- Although I didn't care, I can see the pain and empathize with her. I don't know what it's like. I get really tired about people who are entitled to an opinion. I am not trying in any way to. Oh my God. Can we get to the freedom of speech part? Silence anyone who suggests you shouldn't Jesus. comment on policing issues. You should. Absolutely. I'm just saying that. You shouldn't comment on police stuff. I'm just saying you can't. <laughs>
maybe have a little bit of a sober attitude about the experience of policing and use of force situations if you've never actually been in one. Hi, fuckstick. Um, for the record, this uh, liberal uh, elitist Hollywood type that C-list or whatever the shit you guys call me all the time um, does exactly that all the goddamn time, which is why I'm tired of this bullshit from them, like, everything that isn't dead on what they say is some sort of Marxist, you know, Leninist, pro-China, um, dictatorship, third world, federal system that overtake that they want. Jesus. Not suggesting you can't or sh you should absolutely, in a constitutional republic, look back and analyze uh, use of force instance with policing. I'm just suggesting that the commentary should be a little more sober rather than suggesting you understand exactly what it's like because you don't. Nobody said they understood exactly what it's like, but there are some baselines because nobody understands like the, the adrenaline in the situation, the danger of the circumstance. But a lot of us, you know, and maybe this is where a lot of people are wrong, would like to think that if they were to go through the police academy, and if they were to go through regular training and updated training all the time, and if they were to have, what, seven or 12 years on the force, they would know the difference between their gun and their taser in an emergency. And if they don't, uh, then there would be a big argument for why that person should never be on the street. This guy's a punk. Thanks, Pauline. The officer's actions can and should be analyzed and investigated. By the way, why is my name thing all of a sudden get back down here? How did it get edited? Um, hold on one second. That's so very strange. Openness settings. All right. I'm, t I got it. Okay. Did it get stretched? Is that what happens? Yeah, it did. I guess so. Back. Mm -mm. What, what a bloody hell. Like, what happened? Do you do that? How did you, what happened? Is it like a basis between these two? Hello, it's my name. I'm just Hal today. That's all that matters. Okay, good. Hmm. My last name is there in the text. It's just, I don't know what happened to the, the settings in it. I bet there was a software update. You guys, you, guys, you wouldn't understand what I've been through. This Jeez. mistake resulted in a fatality, if it turns out to have been one. It was a mistake. If it wasn't a mistake, it was murder, dumbass. That's the, that's the problem. If it, of course, if she said taser, taser, taser and fired her gun, it's a mistake. If she said taser, taser, taser and fired her gun on purpose, it's murder, dumb fuck. This is the stupidest. Seriously, what are you arguing here? <laughs> we haven't even had her side of the story yet. Here, yes, we have. We have heard her side of the story. She said, taser, taser, taser. She later said, and her and the spokesperson for the police said, she believed that she had her taser in her hand. She fired inadvertently. After he drives away, she goes, oh my God, I think I shot him. I Or I shot him. We've heard her side of the story. The body cam footage came out. She resigned, you dipshit. Either it's a mistake, and a mistake so egregious you don't deserve to be on the street. And so therefore, the due process about whether you keep your job and still remain a police officer is just garbage because she resigned. And if it's, and the due process that's coming about whether or not it was manslaughter or not, and whether or not she has a, uh, a lawsuit against Glock because they gave, let's say, here's one for you. Let me float this for you. This is, play a little thought experiment for me. This is one that Dan Bongino might understand because um, at one point, I believe it was Glock. I don't want to speak out of turn, but they changed the trigger pull, um, uh, like the strength needed for the trigger pull because of the number of women on a on, at growing on the force. They lightened it by a, by a fraction, and which is fine. If you tell people what the problem was, they delivered these guns to all these police precincts all over the country and they didn't tell everybody, hey, by the way, your gun is now easier to fire. If you put your finger on the trigger and squeeze a little bit, it's going to go off before you might have needed a full squeeze, but now it's a lighter pressure. So consider that when you're putting your finger inside the trigger guard. They didn't. 
They didn't say that. And there was a there was a rash of police shootings, fatalities specifically, because cops were dealing with suspects and their guns would fire way easier. And there and that was one of the lawsuits when you talk about, you know, people should be able to sue gun manufacturers for, you know, when deaths occur because of guns. That was one of the biggest cases and the police departments that went through this couldn't do anything. They could not sue the gun manufacturer who delivered a bunch of guns that they had ordered, but all of a sudden they were way easier to fire. There were more police injuries. There were more police accidentally shooting themselves when they pulled their gun out, shooting themselves in the leg as they pulled the draw. There were a bunch of those incidents. Couldn't do shit about it. So if she, let's say, suddenly was given a, you know, a, a lighter sidearm than the other one and weight for weight compared to a, you know, what her old gun was, it was significantly heavy and this was not. And now they're closer in weight because she got a, you know, some sort of composite special or she modified elements of her gun to make it lighter. Her, then the mistake seems clearer. Obviously you still have a problem with big yellow thing, big black thing. That obviously is a standout in this. But in the due process, and whether or not she gets manslaughter for this, whether her belief just by pulling this, whether her eyes were on this or on the subject or on her partner when she fired, because she thought she was like, taser, taser, and she thinks, I don't need to aim. These prongs are going to go out and hit this dude. He's basically in this wheel, you know, in the, in the seat well. So I should be able to hit him. And whether she's looking up here like that, even though her body cam is going that way, she might not be looking where the fuck she's hitting things because she believes it's a taser and they weigh the same. There's an argument. Make that argument. But I got news for you. Even if all that's true, she still shouldn't be a cop anymore. Whether or not she should have been a cop up to that point is of question, I'm sure. But there is no point in that where just because you haven't been a cop, you can't grasp all of those details in dealing with this. Now, cops deal with split-second decisions all the time. And um, everybody that I've ever seen where they do a community leader or, or a local activist or preacher does a ride along with cops or does like deadly force training with the police to kind of get an idea what they go through, all of them fail. All of them shoot the civilian. All of them. All of them shoot the unarmed person. All of them overreact. Now, after a, uh, an amount of training, you shouldn't necessarily. But but everybody who thinks, why don't cops, blah, 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 they all fail. They all shoot too early. They all shoot too quickly. And in a situation like this, this is wholly different, um, you know, as far as, you know, somebody fleeing specifically that you know is armed or what have you. Yeah. If it is, she will be held accountable. It was, BB, it was a split second decision. It was, that does count as a split second decision. The problem is you should have an awareness of the weapons that you're pulling. She didn't understand this. She didn't accidentally draw her flashlight and say taser. You know what I'm saying? There's an argument, by the way, that uh, they should use flashlight style tasers and pistols as their main weapon. So you can't get them confused. But the reason it was a decision was because why it happened so fast because it was a split second decision. He jumped into that car and she had fired that thing in less than a second, which is a the definition of a split second. You can't shoot the car tires because then you have a an out of control car driving down the street. But maybe a little more sober analysis from people like Geraldo, who because you had dinner with a cop once uh, or a police officer or a police chief, whatever he said before that doesn't mean you understand what it's like to be in that situation. You shouldn't have to. It's not It's not the rest of our fault as far as our ability to grasp a circumstance that Geraldo and you are both assholes. A little more humility. So it didn't start out. Foggy, a lot of rural cops abuse females in custody. I, would, I will take issue with the quote, a lot of. Um... Uh, it, beware of big words like never, always, every time, a lot of, many, those kind of things when it's statistically a, a, an extreme minority. And it is. Out well. Here's where it went. 
So Geraldo had to inject, of course, race into this because, again, the subject was black. The police officer was a female white police officer. Which might have informed the fact that she drew her sidearm instead of her taser because of her own fears about what she's you know, in her experience and what she's been told in dealing with young black males, especially those that are fleeing or diving into their car that may indeed have a gun, and especially if somebody has a, a warrant for violence. Now, I have not seen um, uh, the warrant. They have not, to my knowledge, said what the warrant was for that they were cuffing him for. Um, uh, but... If it was one why, like this guy's got a gun violation or something like that, that informs her behavior. So, and, and might, because he's a young black male, he's diving in his car, he's, they were putting cuffs on him and he decided to flee, that he, by getting in his car, he might be reaching for a weapon and that's where her brain goes. And while she might have wanted to pull her taser, her reflex, because of how she feels about these things, were based on race or street experience and that made her pull her gun. Gotcha. Okay. Apparently had 26 years on the job. She was not new. But here we go with the injecting race into the debate with no facts or data to back up that there was any racial motive to this thing at all. Let's just burn the country down, inject race into everything. This is the part where Geraldo called him a punk. Besides not knowing. Ba basically, he's just re-saying what he said without being interrupted by Geraldo. When Jack squat about what actually happened yet or what was in the office. Let's just, this is what liberals and Geraldo does all the time. Liberals and Geraldo. I'm glad. There's like a little subgroup. Check this out. But we have a process for that. And just injecting race into this, Geraldo, which you do on these police issues constantly. When He's not injecting it. It is a part of this conversation. If you want to bifurcate certain cases away from the bigger conversation, then make that case. Go, yeah, we have this issue here and it makes people believe and you can understand why people would, would think that this instance or another instance might be related to race. And I don't believe, you can say, I don't believe it is. I think this is different from those circumstances and I think it's separate from that. Uh, but the reaction the crowd is happen having with limited information on the circumstance is related to a greater problem that we seem to see. You can do both. You, I mean, I can. I'm a grown-up. When you have none of the data, you have no evidence whatsoever. You, stop with this none and any and whatsoever bullshit. She said taser, taser, taser. Then she said, I think I shot him. He had a warrant. They were cuffing him. We have a lot of details. There's You're a racial component the issue again. How many white people does this happen to yearly? Um, let's see. Let's go with uh, whites shot by police 2020. Uh, let's see. Okay. So um, let's see. Here's the Statista's thing. Number of people shot to death by the police in the United States by race. Um, uh, White people, uh, 457 in 2017, down to uh, 399 in 2018. In uh, 2019, it was 370. Last year, it was equal to 2017, uh, 457. This year, 50, so far, 50 white people have been shot by the police. Um, uh, 233 black people have been shot. Um, uh, 209 in 18 to 35 in 2019, 2020. These are not necessarily by unarmed. This is just people who are killed in altercations with the police, um, who are shot fatally. Number of people shot to death by police in the United States from 2017 to 21 by race. Okay. And then 30 so far this year. So 50 whites this year so far, 30 black people. 20 Hispanics this year so far, one other, and then 112 unknown. These are these are the race of people where it's either they're mixed race or they don't say or they haven't, they can't tell. 
Um, but Hispanic people, there was 179. They're fairly close in number, 148, 158, 169 to 20 um, this year. So, so far this year, the police have shot 50 white people, 30 black people, 20 Hispanic people. And 112 people where the race is uh, um, not related. Now, the, where this number stands out, of course, is in the percentage of population. Um, white people make up somewhere in the order of 60% of the populace. Um, and, uh, and black people make up somewhere in the order of 12% of the populace. Now, most of these are men. Most of these are men in a certain age range. So that squashes the figures a little bit. But, um, but yeah, most of, the, most of the people shot by the police are white. By volume. And by interaction. So, there you go. Uh, and, and I don't know, let me see if I can find, if there's a unarmed. Police shooting database. Larry, Mr. Statistical Fair, White Okay, this is, yeah, so the, the purpose of this, a lot of times, um, it, quote, dis disproportionately affects people of color, meaning that it's the percentage that's the big deal, not the actual number. You've got, you know, uh, a lot more white people running around the country. More than a thousand unarmed people died as a result of police uh, harm between 2013 and 2019. So in six years, a thousand people were shot. Uh, that were unarmed. Now, unarmed, I don't know, according to data from Mapping Police Violence. So let's look at this. Um, map National trends. Okay. Filter by race, multiple values, uh, gender, all, uh, police agency, all, state, all, use of force, highest level used, um, police, let's see, let's turn that off. Whoops. Uh, let's turn it to police shootings because, you know, we'll go by that. Um, so you're in the order of Cuba policing or whatever. So you got 1 2017, 1 2018. This is the volume and it, you know, goes up in the, in the summertime goes, you know, uh, it varies. Uh, 2018 was a spike. Um, there was a drop at the, you know, around the election. Um, and then it went up afterwards. You'll remember the, the, vi the violence went up. Um, but that's the, in, insofar as, and this is by, and by the way, the way they have it listed is, I got that. Um, uh, killings by police in America, January 13th, 2020. They don't say whether the uh, person was armed or unarmed or engaged in, uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. No officers charged. Let's go with that one. So these are the majority of the cases. No officers charged. Yeah, it's, it's fairly close because most of these are people who returned fire. The vast majority of people that the cops are engaging with when they fire a weapon also have a weapon. Just statistically speaking. There you go. Okay. That was a question from chat. Again, don't you have an all. argument to make that at doesn't all. concern me? I'm not making you the issue. I'm responding to your dopey comments. You have no idea that there's a racial undertone to this at all. And you're saying, oh, black parents oh, have to really? worry because they're no black kids. You have no data undertone? to back that up at all. Black you're kids? just further inflaming the situation. And the country will burn to the ground because of people like you who say dumb things like that with no evidence to back it up. Again, my tolerance for racialized BS last night was about yay big. All right, it's a, like this, this becomes tiresome because this is all about Geraldo trying to make the case that as these news reports come out, this guy's fleeing and he gets shot or whatever. This may not be a direct, as, as cut and dry as the Derek Chauvin thing, but it contributes to the overall concern that black people have about their own safety when they're interacting with the police. And that's what Geraldo was clearly trying to say. And Bongino's 
thing is, is that if I can just get rid of this one thing, I can basically alleviate everything except Derek Chauvin over the last 15 years. Uh, 